Hello, what is up YouTube? Welcome to the first video of the new year. The challenge for the last video was a rather simple one to get us all familiar with experimenting with text, with the goal being to recreate this decoding text effect using the simple tools that we learned. I've gotten a bunch of your results sent to me, and I like how most of them took it a step further and got creative with the shape and colors of the result. As always, there are a few that stood out to me more than others. Those were the ones submitted to me by Blendit, Yash Patel, and finally Bambushburned for this really interesting and trippy animation. This is a really simple effect to create, but it's still fun, so let's jump into it. This effect is basically just two parts, a string of text to act as our message, and a randomized string of characters that is the same length as our message. We can then take these two pieces, trim the back off one and the front off the other, and then stitch them together. By changing where we trim these two strings, we can then decode the message. Let's go ahead and add a text object to our 3D view. So at Shift A, go to Text, Add It. Now this next part is completely optional, however I would highly recommend using a monospaced font for this effect. What a monospaced font means is that each character of the font is the same width. This way when we're randomizing our string later on, we don't have the width of the text changing all over the place. To do this, I'm going to go over to the text panel, go under Font, Regular, click the Open File button, and go to where we downloaded the font on our hard drive. I'm using a free open source font called Anonymous Pro, I'll provide the link in the description down below. However, you can use whatever font you want. Now that we have that set, we can go ahead and go down to Animation Notes. So drag up our timeline, split it twice so that way we can still see our timeline, go to the bottom window, hit Shift F3, add in a new node tree, an object input node, I drop in our text object, and at Shift A, go to Text and add in an object output. Go ahead and connect the text object to our text object output, and at Shift A, go to Text and add in a text input. And go ahead and plug that into our object output, and make sure you check this little box over here so that way you can enable it. Now we need to type in our secret message that'll be decoded. So I'm going to type challenge complete, with a little exclamation point at the end and now we have our message. Next, we need to add a randomized string of characters. So at Shift A, go to Text, go to Random. And now if you remember from last video, this random text only selects from the characters in this box at the bottom of the node. So in order to change this, we can hit Shift A, go to Text, Characters, and then we can merge these lists into one. So at Shift A, go to Text, add in a list node, and we're going to select all the characters we want. So I want uppercase, I want digits, and I want special characters. And now we need to join this. So it's Shift A, Text, Join. Plug the Create Text List into the text, and the text into the Random Text node. And now if we plug the Random Text node into the object output, we get a preview of the random string that is being generated. A small problem, we need this random text string to be the same length as our text input. So to fix this, let's drag over our text input, go Shift A, Text, and add in a length node. Go ahead and connect that up to our text input and our random text length. And now no matter what we set the text input to, our random string will always be the same size. Now if you remember from the beginning of this video, we need to trim the end off the text input and the beginning off the random string. So I'm going to go ahead and disconnect the random text node from our text object output, drag all these nodes over, and then hit Shift A, go to Text, and add in a Trim Text node, and then duplicate that. Next, I'm going to go ahead and plug our text input into the top Trim Text node, and plug the random text node into the bottom Trim Text node. Now, we need to change some of the settings on this node. So on the top one, set the end to zero, and then on the bottom one, uncheck End and check Start. And now just like merging the random text characters, we can hit Shift A, go to Text, add in a list node, connect the top trim text to the top one, the bottom trim text to the bottom, and then hit Shift A, go to Text, add in a join, and then connect that up to the text object output. And now we're getting somewhere. Next, we need to change both the trim text start and end values at the same time. So in order to do that, I'm going to add in a frame node. So control A, type in frame, add that in, and plug it into both the start and the end values of our trim text nodes. And if I had alt A, you can see that every frame a new letter is decoded, but that is really fast. So just like usual in animation nodes, we can fix this problem by adding in a math node. So control A, add in a float math node, 
plug the frame into A, the result into the start and end values, and then change the math type to divide. Now, whatever number we set for B will be the amount of frames between each letter that is decoded. So if I change this to five and hit Alt A, every five frames, a new letter is decoded. Now we need to randomize our text. So we can do this really easy by just connecting the result into the random text seed node. And now if we hit Alt A, you can see that every five frames the text is jumbled, as well as every five frames decoding the next letter. However, if we wanted to add a little bit more variation to this, we can duplicate this math node, keep that at divide, connect frame to A, result of this new one to seed, and now we can change this value. So if I set the bottom one to three, what should happen is every five frames a new letter is decoded, and every three frames the letters are jumbled. This adds a little bit more variation to the motion, and I think makes it a little bit more interesting. And that is our finished effect. In the next video, we will be going over a more abstract topic on interesting ways to use math to automate different processes and animation nodes. Before that video comes out, however, I will be releasing a new update video filling you guys in on some of the changes coming to the channel in the new year. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you want to help support the type of content I make and want to help me make more of it, then consider supporting me on Patreon or buying me a coffee through the links at the end of this video or in the description below. As always, see you next time. Thank you.